The Kingdom of Cambodia in the heart of Southeast Asia, famous for its many remarkable ancient temples, has often been called the Kingdom of Wonder. What makes it now special, however, is the rapid modernization and development of the country since peace was established in the 1990s after a generation of violent conflict. Tens of thousands of Cambodians who fled the country during the Khmer Rouge regime have returned, creating a vulnerable state of food security. The Tun La Sop Link region in northwest Cambodia is known for its fishing population and floating villages. The expanding rural population in this area is a priority for the U.S. government's Feed the Future initiative. In Cambodia, more than 80% of the population are farmers living in the rural area and based mainly uh, their, their life, based mainly from the agricultural activity. After the Khmer Rouge abandoned the forest of the upland mountainous regions, deforestation occurred rapidly as farmers claimed new land. Slash and burn agriculture was rampant. Unsustainable farming practices have left the soil depleted of nutrients and erosion is a major problem. With soil erosion and no mulch, there is a weed problem for farmers that leads to decreased yield from year to year. Sustainable upland farming could be the key to feeding the growing population. It will be ideal at this time to, to teach or to, to expand conservation agriculture technology because conservation agriculture is essentially growing food while mimicking the forest. The Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Collaborative Research on Sustainable Agriculture and Natural Resource Management is funded by USAID and managed by Virginia Tech. SANREM includes projects in over a dozen countries like Cambodia to assist resource-poor smallholder farmers by promoting conservation agriculture production systems, or CAPS, a sustainable, cost-effective, and eco-friendly way to farm. Conservation agriculture has transformed farming worldwide with three basic principles. The first one is minimum soil disturbance or no more tillage. The second one is continuous mulch, wherein you continuously provide soil cover, specifically food for the microorganisms as mulch. And the third one is diverse species. SANRAM takes a comprehensive approach with field research, support for degree-seeking students, short-term farmer training, and institutional capacity building. With SANRAM's management entity headquartered at Virginia Tech, the office is a bridge to collaboration with some of the best scientists worldwide. Conservation agriculture could have a strong impact on the country's agricultural system. Conservation agriculture is the, the last and the best solution for the Cambodian farmer, especially in the upland area, because it is a sustainable way of farming that can intensify the crop productivity and while also conserve the soil fertility and uh, quality. Battenbaum province featuring maize, cassava, soybean and rice crop research illustrates the success of the CAPS approach. This is the conventional maize, this is the conservation agriculture maize and the difference is we don't plow the soil and we have the cover crop pigeon piece associated with the maize. CAPS treated fields have resulted in consistent increases of soil organic matter. Soil from fields under conservation agriculture looks visibly healthier than that from plowed fields. Soil from conventional fields appears compact with chunks of limestone on the surface. You see a lot of soil surface have been lost every year and we are nearly to the limestone layer. More than just being environmentally friendly, conservation agriculture production systems provide social and economic benefits to farmers. In conservation agriculture, we introduce no-till. Hence, it will reduce their burden in land preparation. I have a lot of time now to spend on the vegetables for looking after the animals and for cooking. I will continue to practice conservation agriculture and use the extra income to help support my children's education. Cover crops like pigeon peas can provide economic diversity to supplement a farmer's main crop. And due to the improved quality of the environment, SANRAM research shows higher yields on caps-treated maize than that in conventional fields.
The first year the increase was not so high, but the second year the crop yield increased a lot. My crop yield increases from year to year, so now I use some of the extra yield for cattle fattening and for the chickens. Conservation agriculture results in more income and more food for farmers. The system works for varying farm sizes and staple crops, although a clear limitation seems to be that farmers don't have enough resources to carry out these practices as much as they would like. The project only has a few planters, so during sowing time, everyone wants them at the same time. When the project is over, there will be no planters, so it will be hard to continue conservation agriculture. There has always been a market in Cambodia for important staples like maize. Sanrem's project in Siem Reap works to address a different market, that of vegetables grown through horticulture. Siem Reap is buoyed by tourism. Due to its proximity to the famed Angkor Wat, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, with thousands of visitors flowing into the city, robust city market stalls and enterprising restaurants present an abundant need for fresh vegetables. A collaborative partnership here helps women farmers, many widowed due to the former conflict. They are taught to use conservation agriculture with drip irrigation to improve cabbage, tomatoes, and yard-long bean crops. Organized under collectives with names such as Successful Women, the farmers appreciate the benefits of conservation agriculture. I really like the new techniques for planting vegetable with a cover crop because I don't spend much time bidding. Here we need to till at least three times, but now I don't need to till at all. I use the extra time to plant cucumbers as an additional crop. Under this new system, crops are growing visibly more robust. Here is tomato plot and this is tillage and this is conservation agriculture. And what we observe now at conservation agriculture plot and the tomato is bigger and taller than tillage. But we plant at the same time. The women of Siem Reap are also given assistance with market access to get the best prices for their crop and to increase gender equity. It empowers women because they control their yield. They control selling vegetables and hence the income goes back to them. Sanram helps the future of farming in Southeast Asia through higher education. The University of Battenbaum recently discussed with Sanram researchers a possible master's program emphasizing conservation agriculture. Richani Sell, a bachelor's degree candidate studying horticulture, grew up on a farm and wants to use her degree to help other farmers produce more. Working for academic credit with Sanrem, she studies in both the field and the classroom, applying her knowledge with direct research. Students should study agriculture because agriculture, I believe, is the science, technology, engineering, and math of human survival. In the fast-growing economy of the Kingdom of Cambodia, conservation agriculture may prove to be the next wonder using science and technology to promote sustainable growth. With the Feed the Future Sanram Innovation Lab, experts from Virginia Tech and around the world are collaborating to help ensure food security worldwide. With regard to the future of Cambodia, I am persuaded that if we apply conservation agriculture technology in Cambodia, we are moving Cambodia to be a food secure, feed the future country. We are ensuring that their land and water resources are conserved while we are producing food. And future generations will benefit from this technology.